The committee of role is reconvening. It's a 12 2 p.m. Would the offender please introduce yourself and give your DOC ID? Richard G. Morrow, 257432. Thank you, Mr. Morrow. My name is Alvin Roche. To my left is Pearl Y. To my right is Mr. Pete Freeman. Mr. Morrow, let me explain the process to you. I will enter some information to the record. We'll verify that information. Then we'll give Warren Myers a chance to make comments, remarks, or have, you might have some concern. You have guests, and your guests will be allowed to make uh, a statement. You have your, your brother, John Morrow, would like to make a statement. And we have your son, Colin Morrow, and he would like to make a statement. After those, you will be given a chance to make a brief statement on your behalf. Do you understand the process? Yes, sir. Uh, Mr. Morrow, you are a fifth felony offender. Uh, according to the records, you're what, 56 years old? Is that correct? Could you repeat the question, please? Are you, you're 56 yes, yes, years old? Yes, sir. And this is a new hearing for you. Uh, when was your last hearing? Uh, it was uh, August of 21, sir. August of 21. Yes, sir, about 21 months ago, I believe. Okay. 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 Your offenses are, hey, can you hear me, Mr. Morrow? Yes, I can hear you. It's kind of a, sometimes I, I had a, a little difficulty in the question a minute ago, but I can hear you fine now. Okay. Uh, your offenses are, Mr. Morrow, and um, you originally sentenced in 2005 in September, September 29, 2005. And that was for what? Uh, distribution of cocaine? Yes, sir. And you were revoked on. December 18th, 2017, is that correct? I do believe, sir, yes. And you received a, the original sentence was, one second, let me get to another page because it's very confusing. Okay. You're a fifth felony offender, you're 56 years old, and your offenses are driving while intoxicated, fourth offense, distribution of Schedule II controlled substance, cocaine, theft, and then again, driving while intoxicated, fourth offense. It looks like St. Mary Parish, you were sentenced on July 19, 2004. You were revoked in October of 2005. Then you were sentenced again in, on July 27, 2012, and December 18, 2017. And then you have another sentencing date in 2005, you were revoked in 2012, again in 2017. Then you, you East Baton Rouge sentence for driving while intoxicated. You were sentenced on October 16, 2012, and you were revoked in December of 2017. Is that correct? Yes, sir. And then you were re-sentenced again 
at the time we were revoked. Is that correct? Yes, sir. No, I, I you, was, you, you received a 10 year sentence in St. Mary, another 10 year sentence. And then in East Baton Rouge, you received a nine year sentence. And then again in St. In St. Mary, a 20 year sentence. Is that all correct? I believe it was St. Tammany, no, not St. Mary. Okay, St. Tammany, okay. Sometimes I get those two confused. It's St. Tammany, okay. And your total sentence, everything is running concurrently, so your total sentence is 20 years. Correct. Sir. Is that is that correct? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Your vote was March 24th, 2022. Your just a good time date, March 29th, 2036. And your full term date, March 24th, 2037. Are all those dates correct? Yes, sir. According to my current rap sheet, yes, sir. Okay, that, that was a mouthful, Mr. Morrow. <laughs> yes, sir. The case has been assigned to Mr. Freeman. Would you please answer Mr. Freeman's question? Yes, okay, sir. Mr. Well, how long have you served on these charges? Uh, this time, right over six years. Okay. What's your educational level? Uh, graduated high school. Uh, I have some Votech training uh, through work when I worked with Chevron USA. Uh, also have some HVAC uh, certification. I used to build uh, closing proof units for about four years. Uh, that's that's a lot of work history and uh, education. Okay. Uh... So we're here today, you have a theft that was revoked, the distribution of cocaine that was revoked, the operation of a vehicle for offense. Um, your last hearing was 8 11 21. Is that yes, correct? Sir. Yes, sir. Okay, what, what have you done to address your drug and alcohol problem? Well, I've uh, started out, I had, to, I had to dig back deep and uh, just look at my past and see what what was causing me to to drink and basically to, to fail these paroles and stuff. And uh, you know, I basically came up with I I disconnected from my feelings and that I just I didn't feel the things that I should and it, you know norm, that a normal people feels. I would block things out and uh, you know since then taking these courses that I've taken uh, living in balance thinking for a change and all these other uh, uh, self-help programs that I've taken, uh, you know, I've come, I've come to realize, you know, my mistakes in my past, confronting those uh, made me realize that, you know, I, I wasn't, I wasn't dealing with things the way normal person should deal with things. And, you know, this has really caused mainly because my alcoholism, you know, and I used to think that I could drink, you know, and it, it wasn't a problem, but it, it was, it was a problem. And that's just a, just a sick thinking, I guess, that some alcohols get to think, you know, that oh, I could just drink sometimes, but I, I can't drink at all, period, you know. Uh, and, you know, I've been in recovery ever since, basically, shortly after I, I was in car, you know, got locked up this time. Uh, even back when I was in the parish, I was sitting in on certain classes. And uh, in Catahoula, I, I moved to a faith-based dorm and, started to celebrate recovery program over there, which really set me off, in my opinion, in the right direction, getting getting back in touch with God. And, you know, it, it, took, a, it took a while, really, to search to, to really, you know, find out what, you know, what was really causing all this. And uh, I guess, like, you know, uh, through all these classes, you know, I've come to realize that, you know, I, my, my recovery is going to be lifetime. You know, it's as 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 I move on and get better, you know, and maybe start helping others. That's in the future. You know, that's going to help me. But uh, 
you know, this is a lifetime commitment. And, you know, I'm at an age now, honestly, that, uh, you know, I, I, I can't come back. I don't want to come back. You know, I want to live a normal life without any drugs or alcohol. Okay. Um, so you charged with a, a operating four. How many times did you say you've been arrested for DWI? Oh. Off the top of my head, I'd say maybe maybe five altogether. Way back from when I had the first yeah, one. Yeah, way back from 1986. We're going to get into that. Back in 1986, you had an operation of a vehicle while intoxicated, vehicle homicide, and negligent injury. Someone died as a result of this uh, DWI? Uh, yes, sir. My girlfriend at the time passed away. And that didn't open your eyes? I mean, it took you another 40 years to realize how dangerous this was? No, it did open my eyes. And then, uh, you know, I, I got married. And uh, you know, later on, it, uh, you know, it, I guess it went to the wayside. I mean, believe me, I still think about that. And and uh, I'm sorry for, you know, what happened then. And uh, you know, it's, it's a tragic thing that happened. And, you know, okay. to this in 1987, you got another DWI. You pled guilty to that. In 2001, you got a DWI with a child under 12 years of age. Now, you've already had your wife or girlfriend in the car, and she died. Now you're going to drink with a 12-year-old in the car? I mean, what would you think? It is, it's just, this record is befuddling to me. And I've seen a lot of rap sheets in I mean, what, there was no you know, sure me you're not going to get back behind a wheel or a car. I've, I've changed, sir. I, I don't uh, I don't even really think the same way that I used to think. Uh, you know, I, I do regret my past deeply and sorry for my past and the things I've done in the past. And I've, I've taken responsibility for those this time and res you know, accept those things that I've done. And, you know, I'm trying to trying to recover and, you know, doing everything I can to not turn back to any of the, the ways I used to be. Okay, let's move on a little bit then. Um, you have a lot of training. What was the previous job you held when you were on the outside? Uh, when I came to jail this time, I was uh, working offshore as a crane operator in uh, deep water. My main work history is... Uh, Working offshore as a oil and gas production operator, uh, slash crane operator. Then I, uh, I built explosion proof uh, HVAC units for four years with a company out of Baton Rouge. I've uh, also uh, installed, uh, <coughs> excuse me, uh, water wells and you know water uh, water pumps and tanks. Uh, got I got a lot of a lot of trades, a lot of skills, job skills. Okay. Um, you ever had any uh, inpatient long-term substance abuse? Uh, one time, I think I did a 30-day uh, treatment there in Fountain Blue in Mandeville. Okay, 30 days. That's, so that's the longest you've ever had in substance abuse in 30 days. That's right. Okay. Um, what is going to be your transition plan and your sobriety plan? Where are you going to live and how are you going to stay from drinking? Well, where I'm gonna where I'm gonna live is uh, my mother's house in uh, Mandeville, and uh, if y'all noticed in the paperwork that I sent, I already have two contacts that uh, agreed to sponsor me, or either one I choose. One of them, uh, the guy I've known since high school, <clears throat> that has you know been sober for quite a while, uh, he's agreed to sponsor me. My main thing is going to be uh, Alcoholics Anonymous. Uh, I plan on first ninety days out. I plan on attending 90 meetings in 90 days. That's something uh, that's real popular with AA for people that have you know, uh, gone back to drinking or something, but I feel that's gonna get me, set me up in the right uh, frame of mind to stay away from any type of drinking or any type of, of, of use. 
Uh, also, just recently, I have a, a job offer with a company out of Kenner, Louisiana, TLC uh, AC and Heating, uh, that I could pursue when I get out. Uh, I do have a lot of uh, work to be done around my mother's house. At the time I've been gone, uh, she lives by herself, 83 years old. Uh, also, uh, I'm going to stay positive, take things day by day, uh, and stick to my sobriety. Again, God first and, and sobriety will be my main focus, period. Okay. Um, your medium custody, your uh, risk uh, need is both medium. You had one write up back in 2020 for a 30 U. What is a 30 U? 30 U is a, well, actually, I was making a light in the microwave at the time I smoked uh, tobacco, and since then I quit. Uh, 30 U was basically making a light in the microwave. Uh, how many classes have you taken since your last hearing? Oh, uh, let's see. Uh, finished pre-release, uh, living in balance, one and two, forklift, IC3 level one, uh, inner computer class, IC level two, intermediate computer class, IC3, IC33, master certification of computer class, job life skills, Cage Your Rage, uh, Thinking for a Change, Inside Out Dads, uh, and I've also taken Living in Balance Phase 1 again. Uh, the first time I took it, I'd taken it during COVID uh, through the mail, and I wanted to take it again with an instructor and with other individuals so I could fellowship with them. So I was able to take that and uh, see what else. Uh, I think that, oh, right now I'm in victim impact, uh, the fourth week of a 12 week uh, course. So that's pretty much everything I've done since yeah. my parole was there. On a, uh, a ton of classes. Um, I have no further questions. Ms. Wise. Yes. Uh, sir, are you still working in the chaplaincy? I, I'm still attending church. Uh, yeah, since I finished that EMOS, uh, Bible study. Uh, yes, I still attend church regularly. And I'm working uh, in the garment factory here. Oh, you were, uh, I, I, I was. I thought the last hearing you was a chaplain. You're not a chaplain anymore. No, I, I never was. Uh, I believe oh, the last okay. hearing uh, I was a yard orderly in the gym. I believe. Okay. Okay. Uh, so now you, you work in the uh, the garment factory. Yes, sir. yes, ma'am. I. Since uh, I was denied last time, I, I got that job and learned a new trade, and uh, I, I sew uh, on a single stitch machine. Okay, good, good. Mm -hmm. are, are you residing in the faith-based dorm now? Uh, I reside in Hope. It's uh, basically all working dorm. Everybody there works. Oh, okay. Trustees or such. Okay. 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 Do you think you need substance abuse treatment, a long-term substance abuse treatment? Yes, ma'am. I, I, I believe it, it would help me uh, on my release, set me up to you know, succeed in my you know, re rehabilitation. All right, thank you. That's all I had. Warren Meyer, do you have any comments or remarks? Uh, well, yeah, Mr. Roche, it's, uh, <clears throat> you know, I was, on his last hearing, and the board recommended that you know we all recommend he <clears throat> take a lot more programming because obviously he needs it, and he and he has he has done that. See, he's done everything we've asked of him, but um, you know, it's obviously a, a very big concern with this substance issue. But see, as Mr. Freeman pointed out, from 1986 all the way to 2017, and you know, and I won't rehash the you know the Thing you know, he was yeah. doing with the drug and driving. But you know, I, my recommendation would be some long-term substance. Really need maybe like the Steve Hall program, something. You know, if the board sees fit to grant uh, this time, uh, he needs that. Well, 
Well, man, I, I, I agree with you. I agree with you 100%. Uh, Mr. Morrow doesn't think so, but he's a, he's a risk to public safety. He likes to get behind a wheel after he has a couple of beers or highballs, and he just doesn't care who's on the highway with him. I would think after you lost your fiance or your girlfriend, that would have been, you know, your eyes would have been wide open. And you had three or four or five arrests for DWI after that. One with a 12 year old child in the car. You've only served six years on a 20 year sentence. And you have multiple PWIs on this particular incarceration. When are you going to realize that if you're going to drive, you can't drink? And if you drink, you can't drive. When is that realization going to get you? I, I don't. I don't plan on drinking ever, ever again. I, I, I can't. I, I mean, that's a fair look at my look at my record. I just lose all sense, of, all all thought of anything sensible, you know. And I, you, know, I just, you don't know that. You don't know that. You say that now because it's the right thing to say. We need a long-term substance abuse program. And I hate to take you out of victim impact, but I, I think a part of the Steve Hall program is victim awareness. Yeah. But you, you're a danger. Simply because you constantly do the same thing over and over again. And I'm afraid that six years of incarceration is not enough to hammer it home that maybe I need to change my lifestyle. That's what I've been trying to do. Okay. Um, would you please open your mic, Mr. John Morrow, your brother, and he would like to make a statement. Mr. Morrow, yes. Yes, give your name and your relationship to the offender. Uh, my name is John Morrow, Richard Morrow's brother. Thank you for uh, allowing me to speak on his behalf. Richard has always been a, a personable individual that typically becomes friends with those that he meets. I believe being incarcerated has not changed that about him, but certainly incarceration has changed his outlook on his life and understands the gravity of his previous offenses. Yes, he does have a drug or a drinking problem, and that's going to be for life. Uh, myself and our family know that, and we're here to help him. I hope he has demonstrated by his actions, participation in numerous classes and programs, and work as a trusted individual that he has chosen a different path for himself. Again, myself and the family are here for him during his recovery, which will be lifelong, and support him in every way that we can. We look forward to seeing him home with a smiling face. Thank you for your time and invaluable service, board members. Thank you, Mr. Morrow. We appreciate your time in your state. Would Mr. Colin Morrow open your mic, state your name and your relationship to the offender? Hello, I'm Colin Morrow. Uh, I'm the son of the defendant. Um, I'm here to advocate for my father, Richard Morrow, in his pursuit of rehabilit rehabilitation and parole. His unwavering faith has been a guiding force, leading him towards personal growth and accountability. During his incarceration, my father has actively participated in educational and rehabilitative programs, demonstrating a genuine commitment to self-improvement. He has put in considerable effort to enhance his skills and knowledge, showing his determination to build a better future for himself. 
His faith has provided him with strength and motivation to confront his past, embrace remorse, and actively seek transformation. Our family and friends stand united, providing unwavering support and recognizing his potential to successfully reintegrate into society. With a comprehensive plan in place, my father is dedicated to seeking lawful employment, nurturing his spiritual growth, and making positive contributions to the community. I kindly requ request the parole, parole board's consideration of this eligibility for parole, acknowledging the transformative power of faith and his unwavering dedication to becoming a responsible and contributing member of society. Thank you for your time and understanding. Uh, uh, very well, sp very well spoken, and, and we appreciate the statement. And I know your dad is proud of you. Thank you, Mr. Morrow. Would you like to make a brief statement before we vote? Uh, yes, sir. I want to thank y'all for letting me uh, come back up in front of the board today. Uh, Hope y'all can see that uh, although my past is what my past is, that I'm trying to change that. And uh, I look forward to a you know, brighter future without, uh, without anything you know, hampering that. And there's my family. Uh, you know, thank y'all for uh, being there to support me. Thank you, Mr. Morrow. Is it kind of ready to vote? Yeah. Mr. Freeman. You know, Mr. Morrow, I really thank you sincere and heart. But, you know, there, there's a lot of temptations out there. Everywhere you turn, there's going to be alcohol. When that first drink goes down your throat, you go forget all about all what you just said. And if you want to go drive, you're going to go drive. Uh, I really believe that. I believe you are a big time risk to public safety. I mean, probably one of the biggest I've ever seen. And my vote today is to deny and uh, recommend Warden that you try to get him into that Steve Hall program. I think he's gonna need that. Thank you, Mr. Freeman. Business wise. Uh, uh, <clears throat> uh, sir, I, uh, I listened intently today. I was on your panel last time. Um, and you did do the program that I, I hate for it to look like when we just ask you to do more programs, but but it's just not a comfort level uh, today for me uh, to vote to grant you. I, I can my vote is to deny. I, I, I accept for the recommendation that you do get moved to Steve Hall and really take some time and spend some more smoke me time really learning about uh, who you are because you do have a good time day uh, at some point and you do need. And I'd like to see a longer time write up read, uh, that write up in 2020. Uh, and that's uh, a longer time without a write up. And you have law enforcement opposition. Again, I want to thank the family for showing, uh, for supporting him today. It's valuable, it's really valuable. Thank you, thank you Ms. Wise. Ms. Morrow, this panel has a responsibility to protect public safety. And I too am not sure whether or not you fully understand what it means to get behind a wheel after drinking. Uh, we're gonna rely for Warden Mind to do his best to get you into the Steve Hall program. Once you get into the Steve Hall program and you're halfway through, reapply. And if you're doing really well in that Steve Hall program, which is the best program the state of Louisiana has to offer for substance abuse, if you're doing re real well and have a graduation date, you'll probably get granted. But until we see that effort to enter into substance abuse treatment. You may have substance abuse education, but you need treatment. My vote also is to deny. You have received three votes to deny with a strong recommendation that you be transferred to the Steve Hall nine-month intensive substance abuse program. We have a good day. Thank you, 